today, we're revisiting another chilling case from the late 1980s. Mark Winger found himself on a blind date arranged by his brother, meeting a co-worker named Donna. Donna worked as a hospital technician, while Mark was a respected nuclear engineer. As they embarked on their blind date, Mark and Donna quickly hit it off, and it wasn't long before they became an official couple. After six months of dating, Mark decided to propose to Donna, and she happily accepted. On March 4th, 1989, Donna accepted Mark's proposal. They tied the knot in a grand wedding ceremony in Hollywood, Florida. The newlyweds celebrated their love and union in front of friends and family. Following the ceremony, Mark and Donna stayed in Florida, enjoying their time as newlyweds. However, after a few years, they decided to move to Springfield, Illinois. There, they built a new life together, settling down and focusing on their careers and family. Mark and Donna were deeply committed to starting a family and were eager to begin this new chapter of their lives. Devastation struck when Mark and Donna discovered that Donna was unable to conceive. Mark's dream of having a big family was shattered and he found it difficult to accept. However, six years into their marriage, things took a surprising turn. In June 1995, while Donna was working in the operating room, a doctor approached her with a life-changing proposition. The doctor informed Donna that he had encountered a teenage mother who wanted to give her baby up for adoption. He said the mother asked if he knew of anyone who would be a suitable candidate for adoption. Without hesitation, the doctor's mind immediately went to Donna and Mark. When Donna went home and shared the doctor's suggestion with Mark, they both knew they wanted to adopt the baby. The decision was not made lightly as they recognised the immense responsibility and challenges that come with adoption. However, their love for children and desire to provide a loving home for a child in need outweighed any hesitations. Donna and Mark brought their newborn baby girl, Bailey, home from the hospital and from the moment she arrived, she was embraced with love and joy. Donna and the baby formed a strong bond, evident from the beginning. Donna's maternal instincts were in full swing and she seemed to thrive as a mother. On the other hand, Mark was full of excitement and anticipation as he prepared for his new role as a father. Together, the Winger family appeared picture perfect, resembling an all-American family with their loving and nurturing bond. To support Donna in her new role as a mother, her close friend Deanne Schultz regularly stopped by to offer her assistance. Deanne, whom Donna had befriended while working at the hospital, proved to be an invaluable source of support and guidance she would often lend a hand in caring for Bailey, allowing Donna to take a much needed break in the summer of 1996. Donna and baby Bailey embarked on a journey to Florida to visit Donna's parents. Donna was eager to showcase her daughter and introduce her to her side of the family to ensure a smooth journey. Donna's parents arranged to have a driver pick her up from the airport after her trip and take her back home this arrangement. A decision was made to allow Donna to fully focus on Bailey and not have to worry about the two-hour drive home. As they embarked on the journey, the driver began a conversation with Donna. In his confession, the driver revealed that he had been hearing a voice in his head that kept saying bad things. However, more recently, he claimed that the voice was telling him to hurt people by setting up a car bomb. Donna was alarmed by this revelation and found herself questioning the driver's sanity. Furthermore, the driver disclosed that he had a penchant. For older women, he also revealed that he would host runchy parties and invite Donna to join him. These revelations further raised alarm bells for Donna as she became increasingly concerned about the man's intentions. As the drive continued, the driver's behaviour became increasingly erratic. He frequently switched lanes and accelerated at unexpected speeds throughout the ride home. Donna's mind raced with thoughts of the driver's alarming revelations and unsettling behaviour. She couldn't help but wonder if she should trust the man behind the wheel with her and Bailey's safety. The journey home became an even more nerve-wracking experience, with Donna constantly on guard and praying for a safe return home. When Donna got home with Bailey, she was relieved. However, the experience had left her shaken. She called her sister, who offered her reassurance and told her to forget about the traumatic car ride. Despite the reassurance, Donna couldn't shake the feeling of unease. She began receiving strange phone calls and suspected. 
Expecting that the caller was the driver, Mark called the car company and filed a complaint as a result. The driver, Roger Harrington, was suspended from his job. Mark had Donna write down what happened, ensuring they had documentation if needed on August 29, 1996. Mark Winger placed a call to 911, frantically reporting that a man had entered his home and begun assaulting his wife Donna in his distressed state Mark, exclaimed that Don's brains were scattered everywhere he informed the dispatcher that he had shot the attacker in. Self-defense within minutes, the Springfield Police Department arrived at Donna and Mark Winger's residence. Upon entering through the front door, the officers observed two bodies lying on the floor. Although Donna was still alive, she barely clung to life. She had been brutally struck at least seven times in the head, causing severe injuries beside Donna's body. The officers discovered another man lying motionless upon closer examination. They found that the man had a faint pulse and had suffered two gunshot wounds to the head. Further investigation revealed that the man's driver's license identified him as Roger Harrington. As Donna and Roger Harrington were taken to the hospital by ambulance, the police arrived at the scene to investigate. Upon examining the area, they discovered a hammer covered in blood and a .45 calibre semi-automatic handgun. Furthermore, on the kitchen table, the police noticed a yellow coffee mug and a pack of cigarettes. Outside the victim's home, the police observed Roger Harrington's car parked in the opposite direction. Direction inside Roger's vehicle, the police discovered a note which read, Mark Winger, 430 p.m. The letter included Donna and Mark's address, a homicide detective arrived at the scene and met with Mark Winger in the master bedroom of his house. Mark was visibly upset and emotional, continuously asking who the attacker was. While the detective knew that the person responsible was Roger Harrington, he decided to withhold this information for the time being. Mark eventually calmed down enough to tell the detective what had happened. According to Mark, he was working out on his treadmill in the basement when he heard a loud commotion. Concerned, he went to investigate and saw something that seemed off. Mark peered into the master bedroom and discovered that their daughter Bailey was lying unattended on the bed. Bailey being alone raised his suspicions, as he knew that his wife Donna would never leave their child unattended. Continuing his investigation, Mark heard noises coming from the direction of the kitchen. Determined to protect his family, Mark retrieved his gun from the nightstand and walked down the hallway. What he found was a terrifying sight. A strange man attacking Donna with a hammer. The man looked up, made eye contact with Mark and continued striking Donna with, with the hammer. Mark in response took matters into his own hands and shot the man in self-defense. Although the man fell backward after being shot, the man managed to get back up this movement, caught Mark off guard, and he decided to take action once again. He fired another shot at the man after the incident. Mark had a conversation. Had a... With the detective, he sought clarification on the identity of the man who had been beating Donna. The detective confirmed that the man was indeed Roger Harrington. Upon hearing the detective's confirmation, Mark expressed his shock and disbelief. He exclaimed, Oh my God, that's the man who had been harassing my wife. As the detective searched Mark and Donna's home, he discovered a note written by Donna describing her terrifying drive home from the airport with Roger Harrington. The detective was already familiar with Roger Harrington, who owned a trailer park in the town. Roger and his wife resided there and often encountered Ed domestic disputes, it made sense to the detective that Roger, enraged after losing his job, would retaliate by returning to Donna and Mark's home and causing violence. The detective reasoned that Mark, in the face of danger, would ultimately have no choice but to shoot Roger in self-defense after conducting a thorough examination of the scene of the crime and hearing Mark's explanation, the police concluded that the shooting was an act of self-defense as a result. The case was closed and Mark was exonerated after Donna's funeral. Her mother and sister stayed behind in Illinois to help take care of her newborn baby, Bailey. During that time, they noticed Mark acting strangely. He was consuming excessive amounts of alcohol and immersing himself in violent and disturbing movies, despite having recently undergone a traumatic event by December 1995. Donna's family could no longer sustain the demands of traveling back and forth between their homes to assist Mark with caring for the baby.
As a result, they proposed to Mark that he hire a nanny. Mark eventually agreed to the idea and hired a woman named Rebecca, who stood out due to her stunning appearance and kind demeanour. Rebecca was a tall blonde woman who exuded warmth and compassion. She eagerly took on the responsibility of caring for Bailey and promptly began organising all the items the infant required. Donna's family felt reassured by Rebecca's presence, knowing their baby was in good hands after showing Rebecca the ropes, Donna's family decided to return home content that Bailey was being well taken care of by Rebecca Rebecca, and baby Bailey formed a strong bond rather quickly. There were nights when Rebecca and Mark would stay up late drinking wine and engaging in deep conversations. However, there was one issue that arose Donna's best friend, Dan Schultz, expressed a strong desire to be a part of Bailey's life. However, Rebecca felt uncomfortable when Dan seemed to push excessively to be involved in their child's life. Rebecca believed that Deanne was attempting to take over Donna's role. When Rebecca mentioned Deanne's strange behaviour to Mark, he explained that Deanne was still grieving the loss of Donna. He said Deanne's actions were driven by a deep sense of loss and a desire to fill the void left behind by her friend's death. Mark believed Deanne's intentions were good, but she was still struggling to come to terms with the tragedy that had unfolded. Mark filed a lawsuit against the Bart Transportation Company, alleging that the company was liable for the murder of Donna the lawsuit, was filed under a claim of wrongful death. Seeking justice and compensation for the loss of Donna in January 1996, Mark contacted the detective working on Donna's case and asked about its status. Mark specifically inquired about the possibility of retrieving his gun, which he had recently surrendered to the authorities, however sensing something off about Mark. The detective felt uneasy during their conversation, there were certain aspects. As Mark recounted the details of the crime scene, it raised doubts in the detective's mind about the true nature of events that led to Donna's death. Mark and Rebecca's relationship took a romantic turn and they began dating. When Mark met Rebecca's brother, he decided to share a story about a tragic incident involving the murder of his wife Donna. However, as Mark relayed the story, Rebecca's brother became uncomfortable. Mark's account of the murder seemed to focus more on his abilities and achievements rather than the tragic loss of Donna instead of conveying a sense of sorrow and empathy. Mark boasted about his heroic actions and how he saved the day with his gun. Rebecca's brother thought this strange as it was not the appropriate time to boast about ego and achievements while discussing such a horrific event. It seemed to Rebecca's brother that Mark was primarily interested in promoting himself and capitalising on Donna's death rather than honouring her memory and reflecting on the impact of the tragedy shortly after Rebecca and Mark. After they started dating, Rebecca discovered she was pregnant. This news was met with joy and excitement from both Rebecca and Mark as they were thrilled to welcome another baby into the world. Mark was determined to show Rebecca how serious he was about their relationship and marriage, so he decided to take action. Despite being Jewish, Mark knew that converting to Christianity would significantly impact both of their lives. However, he decided it was important to demonstrate his commitment to Rebecca and their future family by converting. Mark believed that embracing a new religion would show his willingness to make sacrifices for their relationship 14 months after Don's murder. Rebecca and Mark decided to elope in Hawaii. They decided to keep the news AET secret, not wanting to burden their loved ones with the additional stress of a wedding. So soon after the tragic death of Donna, this decision hurt Donna's family deeply as they couldn't believe that Mark could have replaced Donna so quickly. In December 1996, Mark sold his and Donna's house and built a new home for himself and Rebecca. In the country, they purchased a piece of land with a pond in the backyard, which became a special place for the family to play and enjoy time together. Mark would often go fishing in the pond while the rest of the family enjoyed spending time together. Over the years, Mark and Rebecca went on to expand their family, welcoming three children together, however. As time went on, the couple started to pull away from Donna's family. This separation was difficult for Donna's mother and sisters on one occasion. Donna's parents decided to visit Mark in their new home. While they were visiting, they wanted to present Bailey with a necklace that had belonged to Donna. 
they put the necklace around Bailey's neck. However, Mark denied the request, insisting they remove the necklace from the baby. This incident further strained the relationship between the families. In their attempts to reconcile, Donna's parents reached out to Mark in a letter expressing their concerns and desire for reunification. However, Mark responded by, with a letter stating that Bailey could no longer refer to Donna's mother as grandma, despite the strained relationship Donna's family continued to show their love for Bailey by sending her a card every year for her birthday. Deanne Schultz, Donna's best friend, revealed to the police in February 1999 a secret she had been keeping. She confessed that she had been having an affair with her close friend Donna's husband, Mark Pryor, to Donna's murder according to Diane Mark had made incriminating statements indicating that it would be more convenient for both of them if Donna were to pass away. However, Diane rejected participating in Mark's plan, stating that she refused to have anything to do with a murder on the day of Donna's murder. Mark contacted Diane and asked, would you still love me when I have done something wrong? Diane replied, yes, I would after Donna was murdered. Diane and Mark continued their affair for about six months after Donna's death. However, they eventually broke up when Mark started dating Rebecca after the murder and the life changes that occurred. Deanne experienced a difficult time. She attempted to take her own life on several occasions, struggling to cope with the aftermath of what had happened. Her life was turned upside down and she struggled with the weight of her secret and Donna's murder. The detective was reviewing the evidence in Donna's murder case as he had suspicions about Mark. However, he could not locate the box containing evidence related to Donna's case. The detective eventually discovered that the... the evidence had been released to Mark's attorney as part of a civil lawsuit against Bart Transportation for wrongful death. When the detective finally obtained the evidence, he noticed several suspicious things. Firstly, there was no forced entry into the house which raised questions about Roger Harrington's involvement. Why was a yellow coffee mug belonging to Roger found in Donna's home? If Roger intended to kill Donna, why would he bring that inside additionally? Roger's cigarettes were on the kitchen. Table, raising questions about why he would bring those into her home. Furthermore, the detective observed that the items found in Roger's car could be potential weapons. He had items such as a tire iron wrapped in tape and a knife, which could have been used to harm Donna and Mark. However, if Roger had intended to commit murder, it raises questions as to why he would choose to enter the home and use a hammer that was on the kitchen table instead of utilising the weapons he had in his car. The hospital. Roger's family insisted that Roger was not a troublemaker and that he was a good person. The detective began to explore the possibility that Mark had the motive to eliminate Donna. And when Donna came home with the story of the erratic car service driver, Mark saw an opportunity. Evidence gathered in the case included three Polaroid pictures. One of the initial officers who arrived at the scene had a camera in his possession. He took a photo of the scene that depicted the positions of Donna and Roger's bodies before they were taken to. The hospital, the detective was unaware that these pictures existed. The positions of Donna and Roger's bodies in the photos did not align with Mark's versions of events. Mark claimed that he shot Roger and the latter fell back with his feet remaining near Donna's head. However, the photo showed Roger's head in the same position as Donna. This discrepancy raised suspicions and cast doubt on Mark's version of events. In September 1999, a detective approached Donna's mother and informed her of their Suspicions that Mark was responsible for her daughter's murder left Donna's mother taken aback, finding it hard to believe that Mark could have done such a thing. However, the news brought relief to Roger's family, as they were hopeful that the detectives would work diligently to clear Roger's name. A friend of Roger's approached the police in 1991, when Donna was murdered, and then again in 1999 with information that could exonerate him. According to this friend, she was with Roger when someone called him, prompting Roger to jot down Donna and Mark's address. This piece of information led the police to believe that Roger may not have been the killer, but rather someone lured to his death. The detective began to entertain the notion that Roger may not have been directly involved in the murder, but rather someone who was deceived and manipulated by another party, most likely Mark Winger.
On August 23, 2001, as the investigation into Donna's murder continued, the police conducted surveillance on Mark and Rebecca's home. However, Mark became suspicious and confronted the officers. He told them to leave him and his family alone and to stop following him meanwhile as the police surveilled Mark's home. A grand jury meeting was deliberating. Little did he know that his fate would soon be sealed a short while later, the grand jury indicted Mark for the murder of Roger and Donna. This indictment meant a formal charge against him, and a warrant was issued for his arrest. The police received word that Mark was at work and promptly made their way to the location they called out. As they arrived, they found Mark's name, and he emerged from the building with his hands up. Mark realised that he had been caught and surrendered to the authorities. During this entire ordeal, Rebecca stood by her husband, Mark. She believed in his innocence and was determined to support him through this difficult time. Being six years old, Bailey, their daughter, witnessed the events as they unfolded. However, as time went on, Rebecca's support for her husband waned as she began to see the truth. Mark's trial began in May 2002. The state sought to prove Roger Harrington went to the Winger home for a meeting and not to commit murder. His attorney argued that Roger had a mental illness and had exhibited erratic behaviour, raising doubts about his mental state and the possibility of committing murder. However, the state believed that Mark had lured Roger to the house for a meeting to address the issue it was alleged that Roger willingly entered Mark's home, which explained why there was no fork entry during the meeting. Mark fatally shot Roger in the head while Donna with their baby was in the bedroom. Donna heard the gunshot and ran out of the room, leaving her baby on the bed when she came out. Mark started beating her with a hammer when Mark thought Donna and Roger were dead. He called 911 during the call. Roger Harrington can be heard moaning in the background. Mark then informed the dispatcher that their baby was crying and he had to go promising to call them right back. However, no baby can be heard at the back end of the call. The state argued that Mark needed to ensure that Roger was truly dead, leading to the second shot being fired into his head. Mark was found guilty of murder and was sentenced to life without parole. Later, Mark was charged with first-degree murder for hire as he was alleged to have plotted to kill Dean Schultz and a childhood friend who refused to post bail for him. Mark, however, claimed that he was merely scheming in an imaginary murder for higher plot, stating that it was not intended to be taken too seriously, despite Mark's claims he was ultimately convicted of solicitation of murder and sentenced to an additional 35 year. years in prison after Mark was convicted of double murder and was sentenced to serve time. Rebecca and her children were forced to distance themselves from him to protect herself and her children. Rebecca decided to change their surname back to her maiden name, Simic. She believed that it could be beneficial for Bailey to meet Donna's family. She thought that they could provide her with valuable insights about Donna. One Memorial Day weekend, Bailey made the journey to Donna's hometown to... Bailey's encounter with Donna's family proved to be an eye-opening experience. She was amazed to see how much they still loved and cherished her, considering her as a grandchild despite her absence. While Bailey was staying with Donna's family, it coincidentally happened to be her birthday. They decided to throw her a party to make up for all the birthdays she had missed over the years. The meeting with Donna's family had a profound impact on Bailey. It taught her about the power of love, the resilience of the human spirit, and the importance of family. Despite the distance that had been created through Mark's crimes, Donna's family's love for her remained strong. Bailey's birthday celebration also showcased the warmth and generosity of Donna's family as they made an effort to make up for the birthdays she had missed. 